Hey, how's it going guys? So today's video, pretty much, I'm just going to do a nice tutorial. Uh, the deck that we're questioning or the deck that we're talking about today is going to be Gardevoir. Uh, we're not talking about the spare rate Gardevoir. I know I did a video on that previously. But today we're going to be talking about Gardevoir from Burning Shadows. Um, Gardevoir is expected to be one of the top three decks at Worlds this year. So the top three decks, if you guys didn't know, uh, expected to be there are Gardevoir, Volcanion, and Lapras. Those are the three main hitters that we expect to uh, do good this year at Worlds, which Worlds is just around the corner. So with that said, I decided to do a nice tutorial to teach you uh, how to play Gardevoir or how we're playing it so far. You guys can take notes and if you guys have any feedback or anything I should add or take away from the deck, please feel free to let me know in the comments. All feedback is greatly appreciated. Uh, but so far, this is how we're playing the deck right now. Um, shout out to Eddie from my locals because Eddie is the one that let me borrow the deck. I personally don't have it yet, but it's more than likely one of the decks that I will be building to play at Worlds. Um, <coughs> sorry guys. Anyways, with that said, let's get into this deck and let's break it down so then we can figure out the combos and stuff for you guys, all right? All right, so it obviously uses routes, a four, uh, four line of routes. So far, we're only using two Curlias. Um, <clears throat> we've seen builds with one, but we've seen that sometimes we need to, um, we're gonna call it hard evolve. So instead of using like a rare candy to evolve, we have to actually physically evolve it. So we've noticed that sometimes it's better to have the two Curlias because it helps out. Uh, and of course you're running for the Gardevoirs. So Gardevoir, uh, for those of you that don't know, has an ability called Secret Spring. Once per turn, you may attach a fair energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. <clears throat> Which that effect is pretty much broken. Um, and then its attack is Infinite Force. This attack does 30 times the, the amount of energy attached to both, Pokemon, both active Pokemon. So it has that... Um, it has that uh, that ability that like Mewtwo had back in the day, and that um, <clears throat> yeah that Mewtwo had back in the day. So for both Pokemon, um, it does uh, X amount of damage times uh, the energy count. So that's really good. And then last, it has Twilight GX, which shuffle ten cards from your discard pile into your deck, which is it's great if you're playing against um, Garbodor and you use a lot of items and they're hitting you for a lot, you use your GX, return all your items back into your deck and you have zero items in your discard pile and they just they just sit there and figure out how to get you to put items in your discard pile. But by that time, you're already set up anyways, um, which is really good. So that's why this is one of the main contenders this year. So that's pretty much the basics of your attack now for support cards oh, another another thing about Gardevoir so Gardevoir it doesn't say fairy energy which is really good so the best combo that we've figured out so far is you play one of these you attach a fairy energy from the ability and then you attach a double colorless that right there is already 90 damage by itself um, depending on how many energies your opponent has that's doing an extra amount of damage which just adds up so more than likely you'll be able to get a knockout if you have multiple of these set up the goal is to have at least three of them set up so then you can attach and attach by ability and attach a double colorless uh, for the turn that right there that's 150 by itself knocks out a garbador um if you're if you're playing against neuburn because some people are talking about playing neuburn this one shot to no a Neuvern. So it it's really good. It's a really good deck and it's really really fast. So um that's why we're playing it. <laughs> now when it comes to like Pokemon being support, um and this is the big question that we've had. So we we didn't know if we should be playing two Deancies or two Bull Picks. Um we ended up going with a 1-1 split because we feel that that's uh, the better route, the more, uh, you can say, safe route. <laughs> um, 
We noticed that when playing two DNCs, so DNCs, for those of you that don't know, DNC has an effect or an attack called Sparkling Wish. Uh, for one energy, you can search your deck for a Pokemon that evolves and evolve it that turn. It, it combos well, like back to what we were saying. So if you have a Routes on the bench and you have this active, you have an energy here. You have a Routes effect, evolve, and then the next turn, evolve. So you already have a Gardevoir going, if you have the Gardevoir in hand. But yeah, and if not, there's more than enough ways to search for it anyway, so yeah. So that's also another reason why we're running the 2-2 two -two split line of um, Curlia. So yeah, and we also, but we also noticed that running two Diancies gets clunky late game, because um, it, it only helps out if you open it or if you get it like somewhat to like early game. Uh, late game, it doesn't really help you because you're already set up. Uh, if you're not set up by late game, then you're probably not having a good time anyways, so yeah. The reason why we run the bow picks is to search for two evolves. So if we have rare candies in our hand, uh, we can search for Gardevoirs and evolve. So that's uh, that's the reason why we run the bow picks. We're running auxiliary because this deck is a speed deck. It does go through your hand super super fast. You're using it uses a lot of item cards. It really does. So you really need this in there to help you get that stuff back. So yeah, or to get your hand size back. Um, we are, we're also thinking of adding a Gallade, but we're still testing. So we might add the Gallade, we might not. Let me know in the comments if you guys think uh, we should be running a Gallade since we are running the, <coughs> the Rots evolution line. So yeah. Uh, you can also get get laid with rare candy, so that's also another thing. So we were thinking of running that because it does help against Darkrai or anything that's weak against uh, fighting. Uh, so yeah. <coughs> running double lele. The reason why we're running double lele is because this deck it relies a lot on support supporters. Uh, one of the main supporters that you want to get opening hand is Bridget. Cause you want to get Bridget and set up your um, your routes, maybe a Rem Raid, um, and then go from there. Or if you if you got the book, you can get a Bulpix, and if you have Fairy Garden out and a Fairy Energy attached to your opening Pokemon, switch it out, bring out the Bulpix, Bulpix, search for two cards, boom. Um, this deck has a lot of combos, a lot of combos, so yeah. Um, but Tapu Lele, it, it's crucial. It helps up too, so you have more consistency getting what you need. So yeah, it runs Fairy Gardens um, for the free retreat. If you haven't noticed now, um, your your Gardevoir only needs one energy to attack, um, and having energies floating around doesn't really hurt. So um, this is actually really good. Yeah, it helps with retreating and stuff. So it allows you to play this. And not play float stones, which you really don't need float stones in this deck. For your supporters, you're running like your basic supporter line. You're running sycamores. Uh, you're running ends. Uh, for this one, we're running double Bridget, uh, just because we want to open it. And even if we don't open it, like we want to play it as soon as we can, because it helps setting up the board. Um, and thinning out the deck. It does run one Acer Acerola and one Skyla. Um, we might up it to two Skylas uh, because having rare candy or getting a rare candy into your hand is very important. So we might up it to two. And then Acerola, it's a new card. Um, Acerola, what it does, it puts one Pokemon and all cards attached, attached to it back to your hand. Yeah, sorry, I, I saw damage, but uh, it says that has any damage counter. So a Pokemon that doesn't have damage counters, you can't bring it up. So you usually use this to pick up your Gardevoir uh, before they get knocked out, and then you bring up another one, and da 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 da, -da. combo, combo, combo. Uh, let's see.
it is running four rare candies. Like I said, it's very item heavy for that reason because you need to play your combos. Um, and this just helps so much. So if you open up Bridget and then you have like two of these in your hand, that's two Gardevoirs already right there um, by next turn. So that's really good. Um, also, if you're running the Gallade, which we're thinking of running, it helps with that as well. Um, yeah, pretty much that's that's it. Last but not least, the last two cards that I'm going to talk about. Uh, Professor's Letter and Special Charge. So we were playing this deck, we were test, test running it, and we noticed that we are doing 90 damage if we attach uh, Double Colorless, which is really great. Um, but then we realized that if people are running Special Hammer or Enhanced Hammer or Crushing Hammer or anything like that, there goes our DCE. And we have no way of recovering it. Um, just in case if someone's playing like Hammer Control with something, we don't really know if anyone's going to be playing that. Maybe Lapras. Um, but just in case, we didn't have a way to recover from uh, losing energies. So with that said, we added the Special Charge, which helps out, which helps out a lot. We also have, almost forgot, uh, Super Rod, which lets us bring our regular, our basic energies back, or bring back the Pokemon that we need back into our hand. Um, so these are very crucial, we think, and they help out a lot. Uh, last but not least, Professor's Letter. Um, because you have Gardevoirs, and they, if they're set up, you need a way to get energies from your deck into your hand. And the best way of doing that, we think, is Professor's Letter. Um, Obviously, you don't need that many energies out on the board, but this helps out a lot. So, um, MVP, I think, of the deck right here. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much like the basics of this deck. Um, there you guys have it. So there you guys have it. That's pretty much the deck right there. Uh, I think give you pretty much the basics of how to play the deck, what, what strategy you kind of want to use when playing the deck. It's a really fun deck. It's really fast. It's really competitive. Um, I honestly, I think that it's gonna be Volcanion versus Gardevoir in finals. That's my prediction. I could be wrong. Why? Because Japan always brings some random deck, the randomest thing, to to sweep us under the table. Um, so yeah, but. My predictions are that it's going to be Gardevoir versus Volcanion at finals, but who knows Who knows what can happen. Anything can happen. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you guys have some feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments. All feedback is greatly appreciated, especially since we're still trying to figure out how to play this deck for Worlds. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment. And if you guys want the deck list, uh, it's not perfected, uh, but we do have, it is, it is playing well. It is, it, we haven't hit like anything, like a bump in the road or anything with it. So if you guys want the deck list, we'll be more than happy to send that to you. Uh, how I send it out to you guys, I send it through Instagram. So make sure to follow me on Instagram. That is also in the description. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to share the videos just in case of other people are trying to figure out how to play Gardevoir before Worlds. Uh, with that said, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.